there's a lot of optimism. Um, but we also noted that people are getting tired of planning for the milliard and they really are ready to act. The arrival of Thomas Goodall was the beginning of a major change in the future of the town. He looked at several and was able to acquire in Sanford dams that would provide him with the water power that was necessary to run a significant industry. When Thomas Goodall died, uh, the factory employed 3,000 people. And that was at a time when Sanford had only 9,000 total population. And then to everyone's shock, one day, and I think it was October 1954, when 3,000-odd workers went to work, they found that the doors were locked, and they remained locked, and the Sanford, good old Sanford Mills never opened again. It's the hope of the town, myself included, that efforts to uh, reuse these buildings in a productive way, both commercially and residentially, will succeed. The Brownfields program is a program that's been developed by the uh, EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency, to assist in uh, both public and private property owners to improve property which has been classified brownfields. And a brownfield is any piece of property which either has or is perceived to have hazardous materials which are dangerous to people's health. Previous to the brownfields program, a piece of property to be sold, if it had contamination on it, the purchaser oftentimes had to pay for it. The Northland was approached by the town of Sanford uh, a little more than five years ago uh, to look at redeveloping this mill. Um, we entered into agreement with the town to purchase it once the town had taken the mill by eminent domain. Uh, it was in a state of disrepair. Uh, the, the current owner was dismantling the mill um, and the town decided that they needed to take control of it before the entire district was affected. Since November, we've put a new roof um, and re-insulated the building to really stop the deterioration. There have been a lot of water getting in um, and causing not only visible rot, but unknown damage to the different floor systems. So what the Brownfields program does is it enables us to first assess these properties, identify them in town. Once they've been assessed, then to use money as a municipality to clean up the property so that we could then make it available for development, either public and or private. So the EPA grant had a very basic requirement that mandated that the community be involved in the process. That, of course, for us is a no-brainer. It was a critical link to making this a successful project. So as we began to engage the town and the community right out of the gates, we wanted to get them on board understanding uh, what the grant was all about and what the possibility was that this grant was opening up for Sanford and for the Milliard. There was a real sense within the public's eye to do something, not, not to plan more, but to actually implement. I think Sanford got this grant because they saw a town that really didn't want to give up on its mill yard. This was a plan that had a lot of community support, a lot of different organizations and people behind it. They saw that there was starting to be some investment in the mill yard, some private developers. They saw that the town has a downtown organization that was behind this. They saw it has youth groups that are behind this. It sort of sets the stage for how to get other grants. It shows uh, an implementation plan so that we could get grants for you know, developing uh, energy infrastructure in the mill yard. Um, we could get additional grants for how to transform the Mousam River into a real recreational asset. As you look across from the Sanford Mill, you look over at uh, what we're proposing as a public park. It is adjacent to the waterfall at Number One Pond. 
we are very grateful to David Gamble who's helped us think through that, um, how that area is going to look. Spaces like this can't be rebuilt. Part of the repositioning of the mill yard is trying to recognize the value that these places hold and think of new uses that could start to occupy even small portions of them. So the most sustainable strategy is actually to reuse what we have. Imagine if this were, let's say, uh, a welding studio and arts and crafts. Uh, artist lofts are certainly a likely use for a portion of the building, as well as museums and finding other uses that have perhaps even an industrial character. As you look across the corner from, from where that park's going to be, there are plans afoot now for a uh, construction of a, a transit center. Connie Garber has led that effort. There's no one place that people can wait. Um, yes, people could come here to York County Community Action's office, but that's not convenient for everybody, and there really isn't any waiting area. So there was a proposal in the study that talked about having some type of a transportation center where people could wait and uh, where there could be some public restrooms and maybe some other types of services, I don't know, a coffee shop or some place that they could buy a newspaper or something of that nature. The main Department of Transportation decided to put in a single proposal with a couple of projects from around the state and because we had already done a lot of groundwork on looking at the benefits of this type of a transportation center, they invited us to be part of their, their uh, proposal to the Federal Transit Administration. I'm very pleased to, uh, to picture the vibrancy that's going to happen on those three corners uh, as, uh, as, they, as they develop going forward. Again, uh, Sherry Ruane of Weston and Sampson has been the principal uh, sort of pulling all of this together. We're certainly very appreciative of her role in this thing. As we examined more and more about what um, could be in there, it became clear that the existing infrastructure of the mill yard, specifically the roofs and its position within the town, um, made it ideal for harnessing some of the renewable energy resources that are available today and becoming more and more common with redevelopments. So initially we did a renewable energy audit. We took a look at wind, hydropower, solar energy, and geothermal energy. And at the end we concluded that really the two best renewable energies for this particular property would be a geothermal system and a photovoltaic system, which are solar panels. We are on the verge of some tremendous um, economic activity and community development within the town of Sanford, Maine. The, uh, there has been some history here of uh, tremendous folks that made amazing products. There has been a lull since the manufacturers left, but we still have their historic buildings. Why would folks come? You know, you'd ask, why Sanford? And this grant has really been sort of a launching place to continue the good work of the past. We've had a lot of good ideas. We've had a lot of folks spend a lot of time thinking about why Sanford. And, uh, and most recently, this Economic Growth Council has made that a central, a central part as well. We have a tremendous opportunity there for um, all sorts of niche stores. It's going to be a great place to live. You're going to come down from your, your residential apartment or your condo in the mill yard in one of those great historic buildings. You're going to walk around and there's going to be a center fountain and you're going to see uh, great coffee shops. You're going to have access to world-class education with our new high school and technical center. There is a community college presence that we'll be setting up in this fall. We have tremendous world-class companies that trade globally that are in this region where you can work. And so that combination of uh, just a tremendous quality of place, a tremendous place to live and to raise a family and to work, all these things will be available to you in this hub for your county called Sanford, Maine.